how far, or indeed have, the bikes of today improved in terms of e-mountain bike tech? Are the bikes of today actually that much different to the bikes of five years ago? Now, the simple answer to that question is that sadly, for some brands, no, it is not. And that's pretty bad. I mean, it could be for a number of reasons, such as the motor and battery tech hasn't advanced so much. It could be a simple thing, such as they're trying to be too clever with the suspension design. Then, of course, there's the price. I'm sure that many of you will agree that the prices of some e-bikes is just ludicrous. But a big part of the price increase is simply due to the introduction of such things as electronic suspension and gearing. Time then to find some examples. And although we've chosen a pair of Canyon EMTBs, the points we chat about actually apply across most brands. The Spectrals are just one example of many. So what we have here on this very misty and moody day in the woods is one of the finest EMTBs of 2018. And we're gonna be comparing it to one of the top end e-mountain bikes of today. Now, this Canyon Spectralon 8 uh, back in 2018, well, there actually was only one more expensive bike in the Canyon Spectralon range, and that was 500 pounds more. And it featured uh, Kashima fork and shock and also Shimano XTR. This bike at the moment is actually the second most expensive bike in the Spectralon range, it's the CFR. And there's one more expensive bike in the range, which is the CFR Limited, which is actually 3,000 pounds more. Now, the reason for that big price difference is pretty much down to the componentry, which is bolted to the Limited bike compared to the CFR. Uh, however, going back to the, the question in hand, I'm sure you'll agree that these two bikes are now poles apart, both visually and also technologically. So I'm going to explain to you uh, some of the reasons why that is. The breed of 2018 was simple, precise and dynamic. And even today, this bike handles amazingly well. Partly geometry, partly suspension design. Components don't actually play as big a part as many people think they do, even though we're made to believe that. Now this bike, on an increasingly wet day in the woods, was actually four and a half grand. The entry level bike was three and a half grand and the headline bike was five and a half grand. Now, when you compare the headline bike of today, it's actually double that price. So you're probably gonna be asking, why is that? Well, it's actually not that simple. And the reason for that is that when you compare this bike, which is the Spectral 8, to the one which we have done most of our big adventures on this year, which is also an 8, the CF8, the performance is actually way greater in so many ways. Improved motor, geometry, sizing, wheels, gears, brakes, all much more than a match for this bike of 2018 vintage, plus the possibility of a 900 watt hour battery compared to 500 watt hours. And it's the same weight. The difference between the two bikes is that Canyon and some of the component manufacturers have created new advanced products, larger batteries, higher grade carbon frames, new app technology, better dampers. Uh, I'm just gonna show you guys in a rather crude way how to measure or get a rough idea of the size of the two bikes. And this is an XL 2018. So I'm measuring from the bottom bracket to the center of the head tube. A little bit of a nugget on there. And if I move across to this bike, which is a size L, center of the head tube down the bottom bracket. So this L is actually the same size as an XL of five, six years ago. But Bear in mind also that there's a longer chain stay on, on this bike and a longer front center. So it's also a longer, more stable bike as well. Pound for pound, you are now getting much more bike than you were getting five or six years ago. Now, have a look at this Canyon CF8 and have a look at it in the mountains of Tuscany and its performance is also much improved from this bike. I'm trying to say that. But hey, what an amazing bike this was back in 2018. 
It was pretty much pioneering in so many ways. It was one of the first e-mounted bikes to feature a 29, 27.5 wheel mix. And what I really liked about it is it had a 2.8 tire on the back for, you know, for grip on climbing. Suspension design was incredible. It was sensitive, stable, and progressive. And what that actually means, sensitive, so it gives you grip in all kinds of conditions, the first, uh, first part of the stroke. Uh, stable, stability means that um, your weight balance is neither too forward or too rearward when you're riding the bike. So great for climbing, great for descending, and also progressive. So when you're hitting those big G outs, the bike holds up in the travel. Going back to the wheel size, Canyon again, they featured a rim size. This rim of this bike was all aluminium, aluminium frame, aluminium wheels, aluminium handlebars. It had a 30 mil rim width up front and a 35 mil rim width on the back. So lots of detail. I guess one of the big pieces of detail is the fact that it had the Shimano E8000 motor with the external 500 watt hour battery. I actually like, liked and still like the external battery because it's really easy to chuck in your backpack. So I still think there's place for this kind of system on an e-mounted bike. Maybe it'll be a bit more neat uh, integrated. But as you can see visually, things have moved on quite a lot, but it is still, in terms of performance and handling on the trail, a fantastic bike, which can compete with many e-mounted bikes of today. Now, this bike has um, a longer chainstay. I think we're looking at 440 compared to 432. You know what, I won't bore your numbers. I'll tell you about the main things. It's got a longer chainstay. It's got a steeper, C tube angle for improved climbing. Uh, it's got round about the same head tube angle on the bike. It's got a longer wheelbase. The reach has gone from uh, 465 in a size large up to 485 in a size large. So the bike is actually physically a little bit bigger. Um, right, the details. Uh, first up, why? So why is this bike? Why is this bike 3,000 pounds more? than that 2018 bike. Obviously, it's a higher range bike. This is now a CFR bike. They didn't have carbon fiber bikes back in 2018. So the CFR is a higher grade carbon compared to the CF bikes, which in turn are more expensive to produce than the aluminum bikes. The second point, this uh, bike features DI2, Shimano DI2 shifting. Now you could argue that actually DI2 was around in. 2016, but what wasn't around in 2016 was auto shift and free shift technology. So we've done a load of videos on that. It is, it's fantastic bit of tech, which improves your riding in so many ways. Uh, secondly, there's actually Shimano, uh, Shimano XTR componentry, the brakes, the gears, uh, all told. But also this bike is now, well, the, this bike with a 720 watt hour battery is the same weight as the bike with a 500 watt hour battery of 2018. But if you've got a 900 watt hour battery in this bike, if you think about it, you're actually getting almost double the range. As you can see, Canyon have now closed the down tube on the Spectral. And I think that having a carbon front end was key to accomplishing that. It simply enables them to not have to build up the frame due to it having a big hole in the front for a battery to pop in and out. But actually with a 720 or 900 watt hour battery, you're less likely to want to take the battery in or out. But having said that, taking the battery in and out of this bike is absolutely simplicity in itself. I guess one thing which you guys want to know about is the motor. Now having ridden the E8000 versus the EP801 up the hill, it's actually far more responsive to your pedal input. So I think that Shimano motor has definitely improved in so many ways in the last six years. I mean, it's gone from EP, sorry, it's gone from E8000 to EP8 to EP801. As I mentioned earlier, you've got Shimano auto shift technology, free shift technology. Um, there's a wider cadence range in it. It's smoother, it's quieter. Uh, I mean, so many things. And all those things together, you know, the frame and all that is, it, it leads to a far, a bike with far greater performance, but you don't need to have a bike which is 8,000 pounds. As I mentioned, the bike we rode in the summer, the CF8 in the mountains above Carrara, I mean, the performance on that bike is the same battery, it's the same geometry, 
it's just got different components on it and the performance is still up there at the highest level. So to answer the question, yes, uh, bikes of 2024 have improved no end from the bikes of 2018. And the key thing is, and I really need to emphasize this, pound for pound, you're getting so much more bike.